All right. So this is a good one. Every Xbox fanboy's favorite review site, Steverver, an Australian review site, is already out there on Twitter campaigning and complaining that they didn't get a review copy from PlayStation Australia's uh, PR marketing. Now, this was already known since last year when Sony dropped them and put them on the blacklist as um, one of the reviewers that Sony will no longer provide free review copies of their games. Obviously, last year they made a big deal. They cried, they complained, blah, blah, blah. We're honest, yada, yada, yada. Well, they added again. They went to Twitter, you know, uh, posted a tweet saying, you know, trying to tell uh, whoever follows them that the review for God of War has to come when the game releases because they have to buy it. And that Sony, once again, didn't provide them a copy, blah, blah, blah. They feel they're blacklisted, the whole shebang, all right? So let's break down some facts to this, all right? Fact number one, Xbox community, or not even Xbox community, the fanboys, the Xbox fanboys, are trying to, once again, say that this is Sony's attempt to manipulate the review system. Factually, this does not manipulate the review system. Steviver, Steviver, however you pronounce it, or any publisher that, or really a uh, journalist magazine, whatever, that does not get a review copy from PlayStation, they can still buy the game, they can review the game, publish their reviews, and if they're part of Metacritic, their review will be up on Metacritic and they will be aggregated. It will be averaged in. So Steviver, Steviver, however it's appropriately pronounced, they will review the game, they will give it a score, and it will be part of Metacritic. That's not manipulation. The issue is timing. You see, it's all about the timing, right? Steviver wants a free copy because it's actually not really about it being free. It's about when they actually get the copy. They want to be part of of the review media that gets advanced copy of the game so that way they can review it push out their score before the game comes out because the thing is by the time they even start the review the game will already be released to the masses and the game will be in the hands of millions and millions of gamers by the time Steviver finishes their review and publishes it there's going to be many people who not only probably already beat the game but for the most part, the community will be talking with their own opinion on how they feel about the game. So any reviewer who publishes reviews after the fact is already too late. You know, the real meat and potatoes of reviews are the ones that pushes out the reviews before everyone else is able to get the game and push out their own personal opinion by playing the game. And that's the conundrum. That's the issue with Steviver. They won't have, how would you say any relevancy at this point because again by the time they actually play the game and that's assuming they even bother to beat it which they probably will i'm not sure but everybody else will have the game in their hands and everybody's already formulating their opinions and those who probably haven't played the game or won't play the game they're probably going to ask their friends who are actually playing the game for their personal opinion so steviver or survivor we'll call them survivor you know they're in a conundrum you see, by the time they play, beat the game, and review, everybody, or majority of people, millions of people who wants to play the game, they'll be playing the game. They're not going to care about the review. So they're in a conundrum right now. If they give the game a 9 or higher, no one's going to care. Because plenty of review sites already gave the game a 9 or higher before the game even came out. If they give the game an 8, it's middle of the ground. Once again, not impactful. If they give the game a 7, uh, you know, it's whatever might call into question. But for the most part, n- nothing. You see, for a survivor to really get the clout, to really get that social media traction, to really get the Xbox fanboys riled up and be able to use their review as a weapon in a console war, they're going to have to review bomb the game. They're going to have to give it under seven. That's their only way. And in my opinion, I think that's what they're going to do. I think they're going to give the game like a 6.5 or 6. They're going to say something like, oh, not far departure for PS4, um, not much innovation, blah, 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 similar to that. You know, all the, all the key points, right? 
And that's what's going to get their website trending. Because the first people that's going to latch on to that is the Xbox fanboys. And then the Xbox fanboy is going to spread. And then what that's going to do on the PlayStation side, they're going to counteract it. And then you're going to have the whole console war argument on Twitter media. And Survivor will benefit from that. They're going to benefit from the clout. They're going to clout chase. That's it. Because anything other than that is eh, whatever. All Survivor got is console war material, right? And there is an army of Xbox fanboys waiting for Survivor to thrash this game. They need it because they got nothing else. Listen, gaming community, most of us already knew, but Xbox community realizes 2022 is really bad. That not even talking trash about saving money or value, it's made Xbox look bad. And the fanboys are furious. I mean, they are coping and seething. They're really in a hurt locker right now. They are in pain. So they need anything. So the only thing this review can do is provide ammunition for the fanboys to try to downplay and thrash God of War Ragnarok. That's all they got. And to be honest, that's all Survivor has in their arsenal. If they want any relevance, I mean not relevance, any relevance for their website to gain traction, to gain social media, whatever, energy, Twitter energy, all that stuff, they're going to have to review bomb the game. That's it, you know. That's all they got. What else? Anyway, this is your boy Porter Rock 77 and I'm just laughing at the nonsense. But come this Wednesday, oh, it's going to be glorious. Ragnarok's is coming. I cannot wait to play it. Hey, thank you for stopping by. I just have to say once again, the review comments are going to be off. I apologize, but I will not allow my channel to be a source for these fanboys to spoil the games for you. It's not going to happen. Once God, of War, once God of War releases, I will go back to all the videos that I turn off the comments. I will turn them back on. And then, um, obviously, I have my podcast tomorrow. But, again, to comments off. I'm trying to protect you guys. I don't want my channel to be a source of spoilers, right? But, anyway, see you guys tomorrow. 8.30 p.m. 60 frames, no lag. The clout, bro, it's crazy. Man, stop chasing clout and chase some good games. You'll, be, you'll do better. Anyway, I'm out. Peace.